Football Command, and I'm back with Woody. Today, we are talking about the uh, primo psychological survival. How do you always stay at the, at, you know, at the top of your class as a man? It doesn't matter if you're 15 or if you're 55. What do you have to do to always make sure that you are performing at your best, you know, health, uh, health-wise, spiritually, physically, and psychologically? Woody's going to give us some awesome tips about that. Yeah, Chris. I you know, I feel like it's easy for me to stay on top of my game because I make a living surrounding myself with men from all over the planet, right? So we're getting men from all walks of life. And in a place like a barber shop, you know, um, it's very natural and inviting for men to stick their chest out. It's just a natural thing, you know? It's where we feel comfortable. It's where we feel like we have to like, you know, stand out and that sort of thing. It's easy to challenge each other. So yeah. it's nothing to be challenged to, um, you know, to a set of push-ups in the barbershop, you know, get down and get busy right on the floor. So I just want to talk about what's kind of worked for me, you know, a man being in his 40s, uh, you know, going up on 50 and how I've been able to to stay, you know, spiritually tight and, and you know, physically fit, you know, through all these years. To me, I've always gauged my performance and everything by trying to stay at the top of my class. And what I mean by that is staying at the top of my demographic. Meaning that on any given day, I want to be able to step up to the average 47 year old or whatever age I am at the time and be able to at least you know perform as well as him, if not better. Whether that be physically, mentally, or spiritually or whatever. We all know when we're young, it, it's a lot more difficult because when we're young, most of us are, are already healthy, we're strong, you know, the challenge is a little bit more challenging. Yeah. But if you adopt this philosophy, you really start to reap the benefits as you get older. Because us as men, as we get older, we begin to, to fall off, right? Yeah. You know, when we get to our 30s, we start to become a couch potato. You've heard that term before. We start to visit the gym less. We're working more, our priorities are changing. So with this philosophy, you actually get to reap the benefits as you get older because men start to fall off. So like, you know, as of now being 47, it's a, it's a lot easier for me to be at the top of my class because at 47, most men are falling off. Most men have what I call a stroke belly, right? You stand up, you look down, you can't see your feet, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, I just like to be able to outrun I'll swim, I'll think, I keep my chest game tight. You know, I try to stay physically fit. I try to keep my family together. I try to keep my income, you know, I try to keep my income up. I try to, you know, make sure I'm completing all my goals. And so that is just a good way to gauge your performance that has worked for me. And that is to size yourself up with your class, you know, with your demographic, with your age group, yeah. you know? And it seems like, there's, there's a, a clear distinction in doing that between tying your self-value, your self-worth to uh, you know, comparison with other people versus this, in this case, it's, it's more of just you, your identity is around uh, always pushing yourself and making yourself better. And it's basically, you're just using the demographic as, as basically a cue. Because a lot of people get, they get scared, they're like, oh, I don't want to compare myself to other people, blah, blah, blah. And it, it, it turns into just some demoralizing thing in their part. But in this case, it's like, all right, I know what's around me. This is a, a, a clear cue for me to stay sharp and, and just use that for my own personal challenge. It's kind of a, it's a perspective, you know. Um, and, and that's a, a very healthy way to think about things and, and not be afraid of competition, not be afraid of challenge. And especially for men, even physiologically, when men compete, when, and especially when men win, their testosterone goes up. You're just physically healthier uh, in that in that scenario. So it's it's good advice, very wise advice uh, for guys. You know, even if, if you're watching this right now, you're 15. You can still basically set up. It's it's like a preventative measure or, or a way to set yourself up for success uh, throughout your life. For sure. And you know, say you're even you're starting as a teenager. By the time you're in your 50s or 60s, you're still at the top of your class, you're still just out there killing it. You're trying to basically measure metrics of growth. It's all about growth. Yeah, I was just about to say that. You have to have a measuring stick of some sort. Yeah. You have to have your, um, you have to hold yourself accountable in some sort, whether it be 
with yourself or among your peers, your group or whatever, but you have to have you have to um, hold yourself accountable. And um, and I always say and I always tell young guys and even older guys, make sure you keep promises you make to yourself. If you don't keep promises you make to yourself, it's hard to keep promises to anybody else. Yeah. And understand that we all are going to fall off the wagon. Yeah. It's all part of it. And you know that, you know, you know, being in health, you know how important that is. Is not if you're going to fall off the wagon, when you fall off the wagon. Yeah. What do you do to get back going again? How you do you know respond mean? to that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's an interesting point. On uh, it, it, it makes me think. I always think of science stuff when we talk about personal development. And so, but that's why I hang out with you, Chris. Yeah. I mean, you're like an <laughs> undercover scientist, man. He shows up like a jock, and you know, he spits all this knowledge. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of um, uh, relativity, right? So it's like things don't, or or just basic physics, right? something in space doesn't actually matter or have any kind of you can't measure anything unless you have a reference point it's got to be relative to something else before it matters so you could just like waft around in your life and nothing matters but when you start having a reference point whether that is uh you know comparing yourself to other people in a, in a healthy positive way that'll spur growth or uh even spiritually having a reference point somewhere you have to have something somewhere so I mean that's it just made me think about all uh, the importance of that in general philosophically for your life you need those reference points to, to be able to spur growth and have relevance to, to what you're doing preach it preacher man here amen <laughs>